Well, hello world, welcome back. Um, I'm still still bunged up, but uh, so what else is new? Let's have a look at day 16 of Advent of Code 2023. Let's see what it holds. Day 16, the floor will be lava. With the beam of light completely focused somewhere, the reindeer leads you deeper still into the lava production facility. The steel facility walls have been replaced with cave, the doorway's a cave, the floor is cave, everything is a cave. Right, okay. Blah, 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 blah. There's a beam of... There you discover that a beam of light that you so carefully focused is emerging from the cavern wall closest to the facility and pouring all of its energy into a contraption on the opposite side. Upon closer inspection, the contraption appears to be a flat, two-dimensional square grid containing empty space, mirrors and splitters. The contraption is aligned so most of the beam bounces around the grid, but each tile on the grid converts some of the beam's, l beam's light into heat to melt the rock in the cavern. You note the layout of the contraption. Okay, so we've got a bunch of mirrors and blank space and splitters as well. Yeah. The beam enters in the top left corner from the left and heading to the right. Then its behavior depends on what it encounters. So it comes in here going to the right. If it encounters empty space, it continues in the same direction. If it encounters a mirror, then it is reflected 90 degrees depending on the angle of the mirror. Right, okay, so if it's going to that, it would bounce up. Yep, if it's going to that, it would bounce down. Right. If a beam encounters the pointy end of a splitter, then it passes through the splitter as if the splitter were empty space. Right, so if it's coming in here and whatever it is, is that way around, then it just ignores it and carries on. If it encounters the flat side of a splitter, pew, then two, it's split into two beams pew, pew, going in either direction. One that moves up, one that moves down. Beams do not interact with the other beams. A tile can have as many beams passing through it at the same time. A tile is energized if that tile has at least one beam pass through it, reflect in it or split in it. Right, so every tile that a beam enters gets energized. <clears throat> okay, so it'll come in there, it'll split, go down here, split, um, come over here. Bounce up, bounce across, bounce down, split. What do the twos mean? Does that mean that there are two two beams go through there? Maybe. Beams are only shown on empty tiles. Arrows indicate the direction of the beams. If a tile contains beams moving in multiple directions, then the number of distinct directions shown instead. Here is the same diagram, but only showing whether a tile is energized or not. Yeah, so these are all places that the beam has been to. Ultimately, in this example, 46 tiles become energized. So, if my beam comes in at the top left heading right, how many tiles end up being energized? Okay, all right. So, here is our sample data. Let's get it loaded in. Um, day 16a.txt sample data and then we're going to have a 16.py and we're going to start off by just loading it in I think we can use the old classic read in lines method 16a <clears throat> and we're going to strip it there's our lines, and that just gives us our map. Okay, so I'm going to be tracking the position of a beam as it moves around in this thing, and so when it hits a mirror, it will change direction. So I'm going to need to keep track of which direction it's heading, um, and then um, right, I'm going to have to do the classic x, y thing for the, my for my directions, I think. Um, so I'm going to say directions. Uh, I've used this sort of thing many times before. So my directions are, okay, moving to the right is, see, 
good programmers would have this pre-written and they just copy it all in but I end up doing it every time but that's okay um, so I'm gonna do row column so moving to the right is nothing in the rows but one in the columns um, moving down is uh, one in the rows and nothing in the columns going to the left is nothing in the rows but minus one in the columns and then going upwards is um, minus one in the rows and nothing in the columns. So they, these are my directions, my four directions that the beam can move. Um, I'm going to be tracking it as it moves. In fact, it splits, doesn't it? It splits when it hits a splitter. So, and that, in that case, there are two beams. So I'm going to be keeping track of multiple beams as they're bouncing around in this thing. So I'm going to make an object called a beam. Um, uh, so at work today, I was talking with another teacher about whether we use objects in our day-to-day -day programming. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, because a lot, a lot of the time you can solve something without resorting to object-oriented programming. So, you know, s small things like this. But I like to use objects because they, um, they just help me organize my thinking, I find. So even if the language is not, you know, heavily object-oriented, if you're programming in C or something, then everything is heavily object oriented. But in Python it's not. But I think it's, I think it's good practice to, to use it anyway. Right, so when I create a beam, I'm going to set it up with, uh, with a row and a column of where it is and also a direction, which is going to be a number 0, 1, 2 or 3, depending on which way it is traveling. So we're going to store these in my constructor and then that will be enough to sort of track it as it moves around um, <clears throat> and so we're going to have a, a function called move which is going to make this beam move and when that happens I'm going to send it the map um, let's call it the grid rather than a map because map is a Python keyword so I want to avoid that and it will do the following things so when a beam moves it's going to first of all move in the direction that it is pointing so I will say um, the new <coughs> new row equals self dot row plus um, Ders brackets self dot direction zero because the first part of one of these ders objects is the row difference. That's going to be the new row, and the new column is going to be the same. But we're going to say we're going to take this beams column, and we're going to add on part one of this does object so that will give us the new row in the new column of where this beam is going to at that point we want to look and see is this beam currently hitting a um, a mirror if so we're going to change the direction so if grid for the current for the new row and the new column is let's do them separately okay so if it's that <coughs> then depending on which direction we're going um if self dot direction is a uh, is that way if i was going in that direction um which is to the right I'm not sure what that looks like on the webcam for you, but for me it's to the right. Um, if I'm going to the right, which is zero, then I'm going to be bouncing upwards. It's going to become three. Um, otherwise, Um, if it is 1, that means I'm going south, in which case I'm going to be bouncing to the left, which is 2. Otherwise, 
if I am going in direction two, then I'm, no, hang on a minute. If I'm going south, I'm gonna be going to two. If I'm, no, yeah, if I'm going two, which is that, then I'm gonna be going south, which is, no, hang on a minute, I'm confused now. Not which is one. <laughs> and um, this could be an, an else, obviously, but I'm just, just to be sure, I'm gonna say otherwise, if it is, what haven't I done? I've done naught, I've done one, I've done two. So if it's three, then that means I'm going north, so I will end up going out to the east. Let's just check that I've got that correct, because that is clearly somewhere where I could make a boo-boo. So if I'm going um, east, which is zero, <clears throat> then I am now going north, which is three. If I'm going uh, south, which is one, then I'm going to end up going west, which is two. If I'm going west, which is two, then I'm going to end up going south, which is one. And if I'm going three, which is north, then I'm going to bounce east, which is zero. Right, I think that is correct. <clears throat> and that's it for bouncing, right? So that's all that could happen with a mirror. Yeah, and I'll just sort of keep moving. However, if, oh, I've, I've got to do the other mirror, haven't I? I've got to do the other type of mirror. However, if it's that type of mirror, now, that's going to cause problems because when you do a backslash, um, that's like a special character, isn't it? So I need to do double backslash in order to escape that properly. A double backslash means a backslash whereas a single backslash creates errors. Look up escape characters if you don't know what I'm talking about. So with if I've got a, a mirror pointing that way, going uh, east will point me down. Going down will point me east. Down points me east, yeah. Um, no, hang on. Going down points me east. Going west, going west points me up, and going up points me west. Okay, I think those are correct. If not, I think we will find out pretty soon. Otherwise, if the cell that we're looking at, I mean, I mean look, there would be a more a more efficient way of doing this. I know there would be, but you know, I think I think this will work. I think this will work. If we are looking at a beam that way, then if my current direction is either zero or two, then I can ignore this because I'm just gonna pass straight through it. So it's not gonna change my direction at all. Otherwise, if my direction is in, and again, this could just be in an else, but you know, belt and braces. If it's, what, but if it's one or three, then what's gonna happen is this beam is gonna go off in one direction and a new beam is gonna appear and go off in the other direction. So what I need to do is generate a new beam object. How am I gonna do that? Well, when I am sending this beam in, I'm gonna to have to send it a list of all the other beams. I'm gonna to have to have a list of all the beams that are flying around my map. I'm gonna add a new beam object into that beam. I think, I think that's how it works but heading in the other direction. <clears throat> right, let's set up, before I move on to that. So I've, I've, so lines is my, is my map. I'm gonna say 
beams equals an, a list, but I'm going to create one beam. And this first beam is up at the top left. It's at row zero, column zero, and it's going in direction zero because it's heading. That's right, I said I wanted row, column, and direction. It's heading east, that's direction zero. So my beams list is going to contain one beam. Then I'm going to enter into a loop. I'm going to go through each beam in the beams. Mm. 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 No, it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to go through each beam in the beams. Mm, no, ooh. No. I'm going to say four beam num in range len beams. I'm just thinking what happens if I start adding and removing things from this beam list. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to miss any beams. So I'm just going to use beam num and fix it. How many beams are there at the start of this process? Just in case we end up removing or deleting or adding beams later. Right. I'm going to say beams dot beam num dot move did I say move was this called move yes it's called move move I'm gonna send it lines and I'm also gonna send it the list of beams so I will send it lines which is basically the grid and a list of beams so that it can add a new beam. If we reach this splitter, we can say beams dot append a new beam uh, going in the opposite direction to me. I don't suppose it matters which direction I am headed. I'm going to send one that way and one that way. So I'm going to say that this the current beam self dot direction is going to go off to the east and the new beam is going to appear in the same it's going to be in next in new row and in new call and in the other direction which is 1, 2. So my direction is going to be heading off in direction 0 and the new beam that appears is going to fly off in direction 2 at the opposite direction. That is if I've encountered a mirror that way around. However, what if I encounter one, not a mirror, a splitter, that way around? In which case, if my direction is either 1 or 3, I'm going to pass by. Otherwise, if I'm in 0 or 2, that's going east or west, then one of them is going to head off in direction 1, and a new beam is going to appear heading off in direction 3. Right. Are we happy? Are you happy? I'm happy. The only thing I haven't done yet is like, I've, I haven't actually moved this beam yet. I've said where the new row should be. I haven't actually moved this beam to that new row and new column yet. So let's do that now. <clears throat> okay. Now, of course, at some point, we're going to go off the edge of our grid. So I, I, I reckon that's what I was originally thinking, right? So I don't want to do any of this if my new row and column have gone off the edge of the grid. So I'm going to say if. <clears throat> so in fact, <laughs> if this is not true, so zero less than or equal to new row less than or equal to uh, the length of 
Great. And zero less than or equal to new coal less than or equal to the length of grid zero. So I would like this thing to be true. I would like new row to be t between these two values and I would like new coal to be between those two values. But if, if that is not true, then my beam has gone off the edge of the grid. Now I don't yet know if that's possible, but I'm just gonna return. <clears throat> Maybe I should delete it from the list of beams. What, what happens? Let's have a look at the question. What does it say? What happens if a beam hits? I mean, presumably it dies eventually. <clears throat> it looks like that one disappears off the edge of the screen. It doesn't specifically seem to say what happens when it reaches the edge of the screen. So I guess it just disappears. Okay. All right. So in that case, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this beam from grids. Uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna remo remove this beam from beams. Do I need to? No, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it keep flying. Just keep flying, man. Just be free. Go out into the void. <laughs> I'm not gonna be doing anything down here, but I'll happily keep on adding adding to its new row and new call and just let it let it drift off. And eventually yeah, that's fine. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let it go, gonna let it go. Right, now what's this about energizing? So every time I enter a tile, I have to energize that tile. Right, so every time that I go into a new row and a new column, I need to keep a count basically of how many I've done that to. So I'm gonna make a nice little global list of energized places. In fact, let's make it a set because we can go into these things more than once and I only want to add them, I only want to have one copy in that set. So if I add to it and it's already there, then it won't be a big deal. Um, so I will say um, energized add a little tuple of self.row, self.col and so at the end of this whole process, I should be able to count how many cells have been energized. Um, when's this going to end, though? This while true. Oh, it has to end. Hmm. Maybe I should be removing things from beam num. Let's give it a little a little boolean. Um, let's say when we first create them, they're active. That's true. And then when they go off the edge, they become inactive. And then we just count how many active ones there are. Um, so if we go off the edge of the screen. I'm, I'm trying to avoid removing things from a list that I'm actively using. And there's something about it I don't like. I suppose it wouldn't matter if I did remove them. They're all, they're all going to get run, run run through anyway. The only problem that I'm thinking is if it matters about the synchronization later. So if two beams would meet, and then for some reason I've deleted one and that's knocked them out of sync, one would get there before another. So I'm just going to do this for now. So if it goes off the edge, I'm setting active to false. So um, uh, 
<clears throat> so as I'm going through my list, I'm going to say still actives is false. And then I'll say if beams dot beam num dot active is false, then now hang on, what am I talking about? Beams dot beam num. It should be square brackets. Beams square brackets beam num. I'm glad I spotted that. So if the beam I've just been looking at is not active, then No, no, if it's, if there's anything active, so we, we start off, we say it's false. If we encounter any beam that is still active, then we say still actives is true. And so this while loop will keep on going while we have still got some active beams flying around. Once that's done, we can print the length of my set, which I called energized. Right, well that's 26 minutes of coding and I've not run this program yet. <laughs> so let's see what happens, shall we? <laughs> Straight away an error. Okay, we've got a grid in a list index out of range. Why is that? Why is that? So I've got new col of seven and a new row of 10. And why did this not catch this? Oh, okay, because I don't want it to be less than or equal to the length of the grid. I just want it to be less than the length of the grid. <clears throat> Okay, that should catch that. Hmm. Okay. So my program is running and it, it really should have finished by now because it's not going to run for that long. Can I just close that down? Okay. So why is it just running and running and running? Let's see what's happening with my beams. So while I am doing this, let's just print out the length of my beams list and see if I'm making millions and millions of beams. Yes, look, my beams are just increasing and increasing and increasing and never, I'm just making millions of beams. That can't be right. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Why, so why is it doing that? I mean, I doubt that the test data would make millions of beams. It comes in here, it splits, it splits again. One of them goes off the end, off the edge. <clears throat> they split when they reach there. Um, right, I'm going to remove them from the list then. Okay. What's that going to do with my list of my list of beams? Ah. Right. So when I removed the beam from the list, it actually broke. Yeah, it did break. Uh, it did break this loop. It broke this. Because now that I've removed it from the beams list, you can't ever go and look at it again. But I shouldn't have to now, because if I'm removing them from the list, then I can literally just count how many are still in the beams list. So that shouldn't make a difference. Hmm. 
Right, okay. Well, it's ended. And it said 1. Which is definitely not correct. So let's have a little... Let's have a little debug. And let's get the actual map up here. <clears throat> right. So I've got one beam. It's at... Remove that one. It's at zero, zero, and it's going in direction zero. <clears throat> Alrighty, so let us step. Yes, we've got actives. We're going into here. I'm going to print. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm, I'm not using this while still active thing anymore, am I? So now what I'm saying is while the length of beams is greater than zero. So while I've still got an active beam. Is that going to change things? Let's change this back to for beam in beams. It is going to skip some. When I remove a beam from that list, it's, the next one is going to be skipped. But that I'm going to see if that see if that causes a problem. Right, I've still got my millions of multiplying beams, so let's see what's going on. Alrighty, so I have got a beam at zero, zero, going in direction zero. Let us go on. Let us go into here. Right, the new row and the new column for this beam are going to be one and zero. It's moving to the right. Let's just say, what is grid new row, new column. What am I looking at in that particular cell? I'm looking at a splitter. Am I? Zero, one. Oh yeah, no, I am. It's a vertical splitter. Okay. That is correct. So it's not one of those, it's not one of those. It's not a horizontal splitter, it's a vertical splitter. So my direction is in one, no, it's my direction is zero. So my direction is now going to be one. And a new beam is going to be added to the beams list. with a column, a row of zero, a column of one, and a direction of three. That's correct. That's the opposite direction. That's going up. Yeah. So that is now done. I am now moving into the next column. Yeah, so now my my position is now there and I'm adding this. Oh, yes, and I'm adding this place into energized. Done. And then come out of there and I'm now going to the next beam in the beams list. There are now two beams in the beams list. I've got one that's in row zero and one and it's heading in direction three. That's going to head up and out and the other one is now heading down okay so we're actually going to go into that one now the current beam is now at zero one
self.new row self.new col. What's wrong with that? Self.new row self.new col. What do you mean attribute error? What was Oh, it's it's not self dot new row. It's just new row. Okay. So this is the beam that's heading in direction three, and it's it's heading out. It's going in direction three. It's off the top, or it's heading off the top of the screen. So because that is going off, active is false. We're going to remove this from the beams. It should no longer be in there. Beams now only has the one beam in it. This is correct. That's the end of that. We start the loop again. The length of beams is greater than zero. <clears throat> this is correct. So there is one beam in the list. I'm going to move it. It's going in direction one. It's going to one one which is this one here and it should just it's not one of those 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 so it's just going to carry on moving just move on like that that's now energized okay carry on there's still just one beam in the system it's going to move down there it's going to move on straight on straight on straight on okay there's one beam in the system going down 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 Okay, it is now in, it's at 3, 1. When am I interested? Where does it get to? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So when it reaches 7, that's when I'm interested. Okay. So it's now at 4, 1. It's now at 5, 1. It's now at 6, 1. And now it's going to hit another splitter. So a new row, new col is 7, 1. That is a horizontal splitter. It is going to hit there. It is going to set this direction to 0. Yep. And a new beam is going to head off in direction 0, 1, 2. That is correct. I have now gone into that cell. I've energized the beam. So now I'm dealing with this second beam that I've just created. <clears throat> this is going in direction 2 from here. Not 1, 2. So that's going west. That's going to shoot off to the west. It's not hitting one of those. 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 It's going to just go off to the west. Okay, the first beam is now heading to the right to 7-2 into this blank space here. It's going to pass through this other one. This will be interesting. So this one is just passing through. Meanwhile, the other one is going off the edge at 7-1. That has now been removed. Original beam is now at 7-3. This is passing through a splitter. Its direction is zero, so it's just going to pass. And it's just going to move on. This is fine. That beam now hits another splitter. Oh, no, it's passing. No, it's, yeah, it's, no, now it's hitting a mirror. It's hitting one of these mirrors. It's in direction zero, so now it's direction three. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. Donk, donk. It's in that cell. It's in 7, 4. No, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's in that cell, and now it's pointing upwards. Right. I've still only got one. Well, this seems to be working correctly. So at what point does beams get get silly
So I've hit there, I've now bounced up there, it's going to move... I've still only got one beam. I'm now going to 6-5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to shoot straight through 6-5. And now I'm going to be at 6-6, six, six, which is a mirror. I'm heading to the right. I'm going to end up going downwards and bouncing downwards now. I'm now at 7-6. I've come down here. I'm passing through. I mean, maybe this is just what it does. Maybe it just keeps on splitting beams. And so I need to just sort of say, are any more things being energized? Maybe it's just going to keep splitting and splitting and splitting, going around in circles. And I just need to sort of say at some point, right, no more, no more cells are being energized. Maybe that's what happens. Let's just look at the, at the, at the question again. So it comes in here, down here, splits, that goes away, this goes over here, goes through there, goes up, across, down, splits, splits, that goes off, this goes up, dunk, up there, splits, splits, comes down here, goes through there and out, Meanwhile, that one goes up here, dunk, splits, and starts again. So it is just going to keep going forever. How does it get down here? Goes over here, bounce, 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 split, 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 split. Makes another beam there, right? So it is multiplying beams. So beams are going to keep going up and up and up. Eventually, however, the number of energized tiles will stop. Right. So I shouldn't be waiting for the number of beams to end. What I should be waiting for is when do the number of energized tiles stop going up? <clears throat> okay. So I will say last energized equals zero I'm not going to bother printing the length of the beams because that is pretty irrelevant I'm going to say if len of energized is the same as the last energized well, I don't necessarily want to stop as soon as I have one where it's the same. Let's just print the length of energized and just see what happens to it. Okay, so look, it is settling at 45. It goes through a whole load of stuff at the beginning. But then it very, very quickly reaches 45. So when I run it on my final thing, it will it will settle on a number. And that will be the answer, I guess. Right, so let me just see. Is that, oh, it says 46. Oh, I think I'm forgetting to do the first, I think I'm forgetting to do the very first one. So, um, I'm going to add zero, 0, because it starts off in zero, 0. run that it should now settle at 46 okay that's fine let me try it with my <laughs> with my lines so um where is my puzzle input oh, hey i wonder how many beams this is going to make Ooh, it's going to get messy it's going to get messy Uh, 
Right, let's run this with just 16 and see what we get. Nothing. We get nothing at all. Is it still running the previous one? Let's just try running that again. Why would it stop at 6? Is that right? Why would it stop at 6? Okay, not one, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, it should be doing way more than six. Hmm. What's going on there then? It comes down here, bounces down here. Why would it stop at six? Two, three, four, five, six, six, and then it quits. Hmm. Where's this been going? It's going naught one, then it's going naught two. Oh, oh. I was only looking at like the next one. It was going do, 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 and then going off the top. I, I didn't see this mirror on the immediate one. Oh, right. Okay, so on my movement pattern thing here then, maybe I need to be looking at what am I currently at rather than where am I headed to. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. Okay. So we will say, um, we'll, we'll do the calculation for the new row after we've checked directions and things. Um, so all of these things that say new row, new col, now I need to just say self.row. And self.col is there a quick way of doing that can we do that in here mm, I don't want to change all of the references I just want some of them is there, is there like a dumb find and replace replace new row with self dot row. Okay, it's it's done it where I didn't want it to do it, but okay. And new coal with new coal with self dot coal. Place all those. <clears throat> and there we go. We'll do that. Right, okay, I think that should solve that problem. All right, okay, so we don't need it to be we don't need it to be printing out its every position now. Let's see. Right, so that number's going up and up and up and up and up. Hmm. It's still making a lot of beams. It's still going up, but it's really slowing down as it's making all the all of those beams. And the problem is though the trouble is those beams they're going round and round and round and round. So I guess I don't need to make a beam if there's already one if I make a beam head off in a direction and a beam is already headed off in that direction already. I don't need to count it again. 
right? I, I don't need to duplicate a beam going off a splitter if another beam is already headed off down that splitter. All right, it's just no point. So I don't want to keep adding new beams to it. So beams added. I'm going to make a little dictionary. Every time I add a new beam, I'm going to add it to there, and it's going to have the the position and the direction. And I will not create a new beam if I there's already been one put in that list. So I will say. Um, because I am adding a beam at zero 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 that's going in the list so when I'm appending these beams before I append I'm gonna say if this row this column in this direction is already in there then I'm not gonna make a new one but if it's not in there then I am gonna add it And I'll put it into the dictionary. Cell for a cell called two. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And then the same with this one. I'll say if all of that stuff but three is not in beams added then put it in and beams added self call self row self call three is true so we won't be unnecessarily adding more beams All right. Oh, meanwhile, this has just been running and running and running, and it's reached eight eight nine nine nine. Okay, it now reaches eight nine 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 much quicker. Right. Okay. So I think the answer to that one was eight nine nine nine. No, it's not. It's too high. Okay. Hmm. Why would it be why would it be adding more things to energized? Than expected. Let me just now that I've done that, let's just test it with the sample data again. It's saying 52. Was it 52 originally on the sample data? No, it was 46. So what's it done that's different now? Have I sent my beams off in the wrong directions? Right, so I'm adding one into three. So I'm going off in direction one and I'm adding one into three. And I'm appending it and I'm doing that with three. And for that one there, I'm going off in direction zero and I'm adding one going off in two and I'm appending that in there with two and I'm adding it to beams and it is two. So why would that be different? Okay, you know what this means? It's debug time. Right, well, I'm, I've made a little change that has made the correct test answer come up again, 46. Um, all I've done is I've moved the, the part where I note that a cell is energized is now at the start. Okay, so it's like I'm currently in this space, so that is now an energized space. And for some reason that gives me the correct answer for the sample data. I don't know why that would have made a difference, but it did. Right, let's try that with my uh, test data now. And it's now stopping at 8901. Okay, so is that my correct answer? 8901, that is the correct answer. Okay, 
part two. Oh, that was quite long. That was like an hour for part one. That's not good, is it? Part two. As you try to work out what might be wrong, the reindeer tugs on your shirt and leads you to a nearby control panel. There, a collection of buttons lets you align the contraption so that the beam enters from any edge tile and heading away from that edge. You can choose either of the two, either of two directions for the beam if it starts on a corner. For instance, if the beam starts in the bottom right, it can start heading either left or up. Right, okay. So it could start on any tile on the top row going down, any tile on the bottom row going up, and so on. Right, okay. Find the configuration that energizes as many tiles as possible. In the above example, this can be achieved by starting the beam in the fourth tile from the left in the top row. Uh, right, okay. This gives you 51 tiles that are energized. Find the initial beam configuration that energizes the largest number of tiles. Right, so I can do brute force of every possible thing. It's just a matter of stopping it when I think I'm not going to get any more energization. Energization? Yeah, that's a word. So I'll just pick an arbitrary thing, and if I say if it hasn't changed for the last, I don't know, 100 cycles. 100 cycles? That, that'll be fine, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's try that. Ooh. Part two. So for this, I'm going to say um, best at the moment is nothing. For <clears throat> let's just do the top row first. For coal in range um, zero to the length of lines zero um, I'm going to say all of this stuff I'm going to make a beam in row zero column col pointing down Now, I need to sort out this while loop. So while length of beams is greater than zero, I ain't going to cut it. So I'm going to start a new energized set each time. So I'm not going to have this as some nice global thing. All the beams added. Um, I'm going to I'm going to make them in here. Nope, not there. Part one's now broken. <laughs> right, it's, that's all going to be reset every time I start a new attempt. So, um, I'm going to add that in there, and I'm going to... Right, I need to keep track of how, how the energized value has changed. So, energy values equals empty, and I'm going to keep on going so long as the, the length of the energy values is uh, less than, say, 100. And the energy value that I've just made, minus 1, is not the same as the energy value uh, 100 values ago. So if the energy value I've just put in is not the same as the one hundred that that uh, hundred cycles ago, then we're still making changes. So we're going to keep on doing this stuff, and then eventually we will print the length of energized. So let's try that with the sample data. Um, I don't. What's all? Why is this thing complaining? Energized. Oh, this needs to do energized as well. I'm going to have to send it the energized list and also beams added as well. 
going to have to send it these things so that it can interact with them. <laughs> this th That doesn't work anymore. None of that stuff works. <laughs> Energized and beams added. Okay, going to send those things in. <clears throat> okay. All right. So with the test data, I have an error. Oh, there is no such file as 16S. It's 16A, you silly. Oh, okay. So while, so this while loop, it's not while less than 100 and, it's while less than 100 or. Oh, I'm, I haven't added anything to the energy values. So, um, so we're going to say uh, then no, no, no. We're going to say energized energy values append the length of energized. So every time we do one, we're going to add it on until we've got at least a hundred and the last one matches what's gone before. Well, what are all these numbers here? Oh, I see. So these are the different energized values for each column, each row along the top. And the highest one there is 51. And I think that's what it said. The highest one was 51 for the fourth column. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct then. So in that case, 51 was the best. So once I've done that, if the length of energized is greater than the best I've seen so far, then the best is now the length of energized. And it's going to do that for each column. And then finally, we can print out the best. And so it prints out 51. Okay. Now all I need to do is exactly the same for all the columns but pointing up and then all the sides going west and east. So do exactly the same thing. But this time instead of we're going in the same columns but this time we are starting at the beam is going to be um, in the column. No, it's still the correct column. But we're not in row zero, we're in row len of lines minus one. And we are not heading in column in direction zero anymore, in direction one, we're heading in direction three. And then we do the same with that. And that is the length of lines minus one. And we're adding the length of lines minus one column to the energized list. Okay. So that's going to do um, vertical pointing upwards. Then we need to do it for rows. So, so for row in range zero to the length of lines, we're going to add a beam into row row column zero heading in direction zero heading out to the right and so we're going to add that to our beams added and we're going to add row and zero to our energized list that should do everything it needs to everything heading off to the right Hang on, what have I done here? Oh, I've changed the second one. Darn it! <laughs> Hang on, what have I done? Oh, let's just put it all back. Right, that was the correct one for bottom row heading up. This is the one that I want to fix. <laughs> oh dear, right, so this is 
for each row in range length of lines we're going in row 0 heading to the right row 0 heading to the right and that's just row and 0 okay so that is left hand side pointing to the right column 0 all the different rows great and then finally this again but right hand column heading west so that's all fine but we're going to be in column len of lines 0 minus 1 Let me just check that I did that correctly. Yes, that's fine. And we are going to be heading that way, which is direction 2. We're adding that to our beams added list to make sure we're not using them again. And this is that. All being well that tries all the directions for, with all the different possible ones and it's still coming up at 51 it's saying that that is the best you could start at any row and that is the best one 51 right wish me luck everybody I'm nervous, I don't want to click it. Here we go. So it's trying every row and every column. It's a big old grid. And it's stopping when it reaches 100 repeats. 9064 it reckons. There we go. Well, I am not at all happy. Oh, look at that. Was that there before? I don't remember that being there before. Yeah, I'm not happy with that code. Um, but uh, but it you know works. Oh yeah, this is definitely broken, isn't it? I ought to fix this. Really, I ought to fix this. All I need to do is just um, initialize these things in there and then when I am calling this I send it energized and I send it beams added again it's it's not a great way of doing it but uh, but it works you know and it doesn't take too long to do so the key thing in there was realizing that those beams keep going around forever so don't keep on making new beams because once you've made one in a particular place heading in a particular direction there's no point then later making another one heading off in that direction because you're just going to be multiplying your beams way too many times um, and that's what we're slowing it down okay fair enough all done didn't take too long in the end I think that was about an hour and a quarter once once I've sort of you know trimmed off my me coughing and that sort of stuff maybe maybe it'll be a reasonable length day 16 now let's talk real for a second it is currently um, as I'm recording this the 18th of November so the real advent of code starts in a couple of weeks um, I've still got 10 more of these to do it so at my current rate of about two a week that's not gonna you know, that's not gonna work so I'm probably not gonna finish 2023 before the new 2024 advent of code begins so um, but that's fine that's fine we'll get to it at some point so at some point in the future the the timelines might get a little bit screwy and the numbering of the videos might get a little bit messed up but we'll make it we'll get through in the end and uh, yeah hopefully we'll have some fun I wonder what the new one's gonna be like sometimes there's a theme 
and I don't just mean, you know, um, reindeers and lava and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes there's like the different puzzles have like, uh, you know, they continue on one after the other. So, yeah, those might be quite interesting. I'm quite excited, quite excited by this computer magic. Um, right, I hopefully I will see you again next time. Goodbye.